Hello, hello, hello. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Come in, come in, come in. This is Tamika Zen. I am Tamika. Get on in here, y'all. Get on in here. Kick off your shoes and relax your feet, honey. You are now in the den. So, guys, this is my review recap for Love After Lockup, Love During Lockup, Gel Bait and Switch, honey. All right. <laughs> we are here where Ty is confronting Hon Hadi about his other fiance. You know, Michael's sister over here dropping bombs. Like, I ain't trying to throw my brother under the bus, but I'm going to throw my brother under the bus, girl. And I'm going to keep it real with you and I'm going to tell you some things. You know, Emily and Dory, who I feel like are just really wasting our times. I don't understand what they are even up here for. You know, she is over here giving him an ultimatum that she don't want him talking to what's his name storm child i don't even <laughs> know but they just are a waste of space if you ask me you know jessica is shocked by dustin's revelation <laughs> and chelsea is over here still trying to uncover some things about mikey apparently just like a lot of these other ones she has no clue what the hell is going on y'all that is where we are at that's what we gonna get into so you guys you know i also do want to apologize this is very late okay i was really debating whether i should still even bother doing it or not of course i was away from Wednesday to Sunday, you know, one, celebrating Thanksgiving, two, celebrating my mama's birthday, just having a little vacation time. I got back late last night and I was going to still try to do the review then. And then I was like, eh, you know how sometimes you need a vacation from your vacation. I don't know if y'all ever been here before, but that is where your girl was at. So, you know, I'm feeling a little bit more rested today. I said, you know what? I'm still going to put it out for the few of you that do watch. Okay. For your viewing pleasure. Okay. So let's go ahead and get into this. Of course, we started out with Jessica and Dustin. Child, Jessica says she needs, you know, her questions answered, child. She need to get to the bottom of this and not by his family, but directly from Dustin. Okay. She needs to know what is going on and... You know, has she thrown all her eggs into one basket? Do we really have to ask that, Jessica? <laughs> okay. I think we know that that's what you did, boo. And, you know, she's over here on her way to go visit Dustin at the prison. So I'm like, really? She can visit Dustin at the prison? Mm, okay. We going to see. We already know the cameras is not going to be allowed in and all of that good stuff. So when she comes out, she is upset because she said, they terminated me, okay? They didn't let me see him. They said I had to leave. And she's calling up. I'm not sure if that was one of his family members or if it was his friend, y'all. You know, put it in the comments if you know. But she makes a call. She lets it be known. They kick me out. They like, well, why? What did you get kicked out for? I don't know. I did everything right. I followed all the rules. I was dressed appropriately. However, okay, we all know at this point because she said it a thousand damn times that you know they know she has to put down all the places she used to work they know the history they know that she was a jail employee and that obviously they started talking with her working in the prison and him being in there and we have heard her say time and time again how hard they are on him and that you know they put him in the box constantly and she believes that this comes be you know from knowing that they um talked right and at this point now she can't even send him money be on video calls you know, um, be on any type of visiting list or whatever, right? And that they cuffed him. And so with them cuffing him, that means he's going to be sent to the box. And he just basically had got out the box. So, of course, she's like, you know, they're out to get us. They don't want us to be able to spend time together and all of that good stuff. My thing is, Jessica, why would you even jeopardize and go in there in the first place? Because you already knew all of this before you went in there. Obviously, they did get to talk somewhat, okay, before the visit was interrupted. So I'm a little confused with that because I'm assuming maybe they didn't check everything or everything else didn't go through. And so after they were already in the process of the visit, you know, she's saying how she didn't have anything revealing on. She wore a t-shirt, she wore sweats and she did everything right. But she did get to ask him about the drugs. I don't understand why she needed a confirmation. Did you think his mother and his sister was lying, girl? You know, but I guess she just wanted to hear it from the horse's mouth. And she says that he did admit to her that he slipped up, okay, and used meth, right? And so I'm thinking that he's meaning previous to being in prison, child. But later when she talking to her friend, we hearing that, no, this is something that he's saying he actually did while being in there. Now, 
you know, finally, like I said, her friend does come by the house. She's super excited to see us. She's like, girl, we got to talk. You're going to have to sit down for this one because there's some stuff I got to tell you. You know, she's telling her she wants her to help her put these letters together. And her friend is like, girl, you know, give me the juicy stuff. All right. Read me some of these letters that you've been getting. And she's like, you know, it's all fresh and new and it's exciting when it's something new. And he's a 28 year old and you the you know, 40 year old. So it's obviously the libido for you. OK, he's putting in the work right now. But is he because have they even been able to be together or does she mean when he gets out? But nonetheless, I digress, you know, she's laughing it up with her and she's telling her to read this letter. And basically one of the letters that she starts reading that she thinks is like, I guess, one of the best ones. OK, the creme of the creme is one about chocolate syrup, honey. It was doing absolutely nothing for me. He was saying how he was going to pour these you know, eight bottles or 10 bottles, whatever the hell it was into the tub and fill it up. And once it fills up, you know, with the chocolate syrup, he was going to fill it up with some other things. And her friend was like, "Woo, baby. Okay. It's getting hot in here. She said, this is more, you know, crazy than, um, what the heck was that book that everybody was going crazy for? And they made it into a movie, 50 shades of gray. Okay. And so, you know, Jessica over here talking about, Oh, you know, I love that book. But then we get serious, okay, and her friend starts giving her a reality check because she goes from to, from telling her about that and saying, you know, she doesn't even know why this man is supposed to be the love of her life. This is what's even crazy about Jessica for me. You lose your job or quit your job, whichever way you want to put it. You jeopardizing yourself, and on top of that, you're talking about all of this on damn national TV, girl. And um, you don't even know what you really want or like about this man. Even when his family asked in the last episode, oh, I don't know. I don't know. I think it was just the way he was standing there creepy. Like, huh? So now she's putting all these letters together and trying to, I guess, think of everything as an overall picture and, you know, good versus bad and whatever to see what our ways. And she's saying that, you know, what really makes him the love of her life in the first place, that she's just so mesmerized with him. Child, this sounds like nothing but you and lust and you doing all this and losing your job for lust that you can't even have. That's what it's sounding like to me, Jessica. But her girlfriend start dropping the real deal on her after um you know her expressing and telling her like he slipped up girl all right he admitted to me that he used drugs and she was like girl what drugs what drugs are we talking about and she's like meth she said oh hell to the no okay that's some serious mess right there honey you cannot be with this man you are making a big mistake here and she's basically like oh you know he done told you that he got caught out here and she was like no he didn't get caught he admitted it to me and she was like yeah but it doesn't matter how long do you think that he's gonna be able to actually continue and uphold himself once he gets out or whatever right and you know Jessica did start crying and she was comforting her and telling her that she's here for her or whatever regardless you know she's gonna always have her back but she was like you know things happen sometimes we think we're in love but we're really not and she basically was like you know you can make mistakes and be able to correct them or whatever right but Jessica talking about but I feel like he is and all this other stuff She's like, yeah, you could feel that way, but that doesn't mean, you know, that that is actually what it is, child. All right. And he did confess to you, you know, and she was like, oh, well, he used because he was bored and because he was inside. She was like, girl, he going to do the same thing on the outside. You know, she's like, oh, but he was in there for three years. So now at this point, everything that her friends say, she's coming back with an excuse for it. And she said, girl, if you're not done, you're not done. You can't save him. Only he can save Herself, she basically starts to talk about, you know, when you're a nurse and when you're in the health field and stuff like that, you're so used to taking care of people because that's what you do. It becomes second nature. And then you end up thinking you can take care of men and save men. Now, I was in the nursing field for quite many years. And that is true as far as us wanting to save and help people, honey. But it ain't never been to the point where I want to save no man that was locked up in jail or meth. I'm just saying. So she basically starts to you know, talk about she don't know what she's going to do. And, you know, she believes that this is not what he wants and that, you know, he can get himself together. And she was like, listen, you could think all of that in your head. 
But when it's time for him to come out, more than likely he'll get out. You'll be busting your behind. He'll be partying. You'll be fronting all the bills just for him to go with his old friends and get high again. And still basically continue to use drugs while you are busting your behind as a nurse. And he'll be right back in the slammer. And that's what it's basically going to be. And you'll be back to nothing again. So like I said, her girlfriend, um, you know, was just giving her the real deal and something to think about that. She's probably not going to listen to anyway, but, you know, we shall see. And she definitely was just saying so, you know, us in the confessional that she thinks her friend is definitely making a big, big mistake, right? And that he has been in the prison system for so long. That's what he's basically accustomed to and that's what he's going to do and he's not going to stop. She's probably right, okay? I agree with her and I don't know how Jessica was so comfortable with, like I said before, moving her daughter all the way across country and you ain't even know everything you needed to know about this man that you over here trying to move for a child, girl, bye, okay? Now, moving on along from her, you know, it was funny, too, because her girlfriend said, child, he ain't got no job. He ain't got no car. He ain't got no home. He ain't even got no underwear. I said, now, girl, break it down, sis. OK, break it down. <laughs> Is that really what the hell you want? You know, you want to go down for that. I love the fact that she said that. But moving on from there, we got Justine. OK, and Michael. Now, Miss Justine, honey. Michael calls her up and he was giving a little bit of attitude, okay? He over here like, yo, what was that about with your cousin asking me all these questions, all right? I don't like being asked questions. She was like, come on, that's only natural. Of course, my family is going to ask questions when they see that it's a man that's been locked up for six years and, you know, he over here buying me an expensive car. He's like, I don't care what the hell is she, the IRS, the FBI, you know, to be having all these different damn questions. He was like, you know, I don't even answer to my mother. And he's like, I don't appreciate these people, and you know, asking me questions. She like, these people, these people, hold up, brother. What do you mean? You know, these people, these people are my damn family. And like I said, common sense, they're going to ask questions as to, you know, what is going on. She's like, come on now. Now you starting to piss me off. I might have to hang up on you. And he's telling her, he, you know, she better and I come at him because he ain't in the damn mood, you know, and so she was basically, I mean, at this point, the damn call was ended anyway, they was telling them they only had like minutes, seconds or whatever left, and she was saying she was getting ready to hang up, so she just was like, all right, bye, love you, see you later, whatever, because they really was just talking over each other, so I said, well, damn, out of all the couples, you know, Justine and Michael seemed like they had it kind of the most together, but do they, honey, all right, do they? Because, honey, Michael's sister calls on video and she's like, oh, girl, how you liking it? How's things going so far with you being a newlywed? And she's like, well, it's pretty much the same thing because we still not getting to spend time with each other. You know, he's still locked up. I really will get to see him more when he come home. It's kind of depressing, you know, being this newlywed couple or whatever and not being able to be with him. OK, and she tells her she could come get the damn kids anytime because she was asking about the kids. So the sister start going into, you know, well, child, this car he got you, that shit was really expensive, honey. He foot, you know, foot the bill over there. And she's like, yeah, I never had nobody buy me a big gift like that. And I really appreciated it or whatever, right? And I'll be telling him he don't got to do stuff like that. And we found out that Michael got a damn sneaker business going on, y'all. Okay, he ain't concentrating so much on the music since he's been in there. He's actually been really building this sneaker company. Child, I seen some prices saying $1,299. I said, who buying these sneakers? I never heard of these sneakers a day before in my life. And apparently there's a lot of, you know... The biggest supporters are guys that's in prison that's about to do up to 20 years. I said, well, where are they getting this damn money from? These people in jail got more damn money than me, child. I ain't even been able to buy me a damn regular pair of sneakers in a minute, let alone something that costs $1,299, all right? I need to know y'all damn secret. And so she was basically like, you know, she want him to be able to get out and really focus on that as well because she's been basically the one that's been putting in the work in there. But she was like, you know, it is going super good and he actually does good with marketing from in there, all things considered. I said, well, damn, he got time to market and everything, child. Listen, okay, Michael. So, you know, in the meantime, her sis, his sister's like, listen, I ain't trying to throw nobody underneath the bus or whatever, but I'm going to keep it real with you. I'm just going to say it. You know, this is something Michael is known for. He has been giving a lot of women, okay, out here, 
um freaking cause child michael likes giving out calls he like giving out gifts and she was telling him at one point like you know you gotta stop just jumping and being willing to do that so easy and she basically was also you know of course saying that she's hoping that michael has left all of that past life behind because of course he went to jail for selling heroin and fentanyl and so obviously you know justine had never heard about her him giving these gifts out child because she was like wait a minute uh, uh rewind what you said i'm confused come again she was like what do you mean he was gifting these damn women cars she like you know i'm thinking that i'm special like hold on hold the phone she was like uh he gave everybody a damn car you know and the sister was like well people before you was people before you of course he had a life before you just like you had a life you know before him and she's like well i'm gonna really need to talk to him about this or whatever because i've never heard about this so obviously he left it out on purpose and she basically was saying that you know is this a recycled old gift that he do you know for everybody and she's like does he get the cars back does he leave them with the cars so the sister was like well obviously he leaves them with the cars you know he ain't a you know gonna give you a gift and then take it back if it's a gift it's a gift for you and that's that you know but he just moves on once the relationship is done and she was like nah i'm gonna have to talk to him about this because he should have said something about that to me and the sister's pretty much like girl you know do what you gotta do you know yes i think you should have a conversation with him about this right and he's you know she's basically like yeah we're married now so um yeah we <laughs> you know like we gotta talk about this right that's a problem for me I said, okay, girl, so we're going to see, you know, what's going to happen with Michael and Justine. On one hand, I'm like, y'all just have to make some type of damn drama, right? Because it wasn't none there. So <laughs> we're going to do what it do. Now, moving on along, we get Emily and Dory. Like I said, I don't really see the point of these two. They are just filling up space. You know, he calls her to see how everything went. Was she able to meet up with Smoke? She's like, yeah, I was, but he was disrespectful. I didn't like the way he came out his face. And basically, she is saying that he has to stop his relationship with Smoke. Never see him again. Don't deal with him again. Or she is basically like, don't even bother calling me. I don't want to be bothered. I don't want to hear from you again. So he's like, well, you know, I'm going to stick with you and I'm going to side with you. You know, I have no choice because he was like, really, we got to take it there. You know, that's the way it got to be. And he was like, well, you have had my back. So therefore, I'm going to have yours. I'm going to stick by you and do what you say or whatever. Right. And she basically just hangs up the phone and she's saying how, you know, she don't trust smoke. She could see him going back in jail. Um, you know, he's this criminal and he's young and this, that, and the third. I'm like, uh, yeah, but isn't Dory a damn criminal too that you're talking to? So I don't understand the point of you downplaying smoke, you know, to benefit Dory when they both seem like they was in the same situation. But okay. Now, granted, I didn't like the way smoke came out at her when she did meet up with him and I didn't understand the point of the meeting in the first place. Now, when Dory calls smoke to see what happened, Smoke is talking about your shit went left. I ain't gonna lie. He's like, she was being disrespectful. I got mad and I got disrespectful. I'm like, nah, Smoke, that's not what happened. Your ass was basically already being disrespectful. Like, let's keep it real and say things the way that they are. But of course, he was not. Okay. And so he was saying that she is controlling. Now that part I can agree with. And he was like, really, you know, after everything that we've been through and you knowing me for all this time, she never even came. You seen you once in the three years you know, you're going to choose her over me. He's like, okay, well, I hope you're making the right choice or whatever, you know, and he's basically saying to him, like, you know, yeah, I'm in this with her, it's for real, you know, that's my wifey or whatever the case may be, you know, and I have to do what I have to do. So Smoke was like, well, I bet my last damn dollar, okay, that that shit is not going to last long. And he's probably right, honey, because I don't even know how it lasted. <laughs> To the point that it is now, like I said, is giving me fake, okay, fugazi. Now, Chelsea and Mike, child. Chelsea is still down here riding with Mike Mama to see the lawyer. You know, they come to the lawyer's office and seduce themselves. They start talking about the fact that he has several felonies and that, you know, what he got arrested for most recently was stolen property and tampering with evidence child that damn lawyer looked at that tablet and started pulling up stuff and it was a long list of damn felonies and apparently chelsea you know seems to be shocked and appalled child okay and didn't have any idea about this she over here talking about michael how many felony cases do you have okay 
And the lawyer passed the tablet to her for her to look at it because he was like, you know, who is this? You know, because mama introduced herself as his mother. And then she lets, you know, the lawyer know like this is his girlfriend. And so she's looking through all of them. You know, he over here talking about he got a C8, C10, C18, whatever the heck, you know, those different codes stand for different felonies that he's committed. And she didn't know about all of this. All right. But we are learning more about somewhat, okay, because, of course, they got to be ignorant. I can't stand when they do that part where they put the sound down every time they want to show damn Chelsea. Like I said, I don't know who creative decision it was to do that. And so we don't hear all of it. But from the parts that we do hear, basically, you know, Mikey ends up calling right in the middle of them talking and being there with the lawyer. So Mikey is able to tell or Mike, I should say, it's too many mics up here is able to tell, you know, the lawyer what exactly happened. And so supposedly these strokes was actually real. And, you know, when he got brought into um, the ER, the nurse basically was saying, like, get those, you know, cuffs off of him. He had a stroke or whatever, right? And they didn't give him the immediate attention, immediate, immediate medical attention that he needed, right? And her mom is saying that that's what she's most concerned about, that that's what they was there about to talk about the whole medical part pretty much, right? That's what was their biggest concern. And so the lawyer basically was saying that it looks like they do, do have a valid case, like some of his rights could have been violated with this situation, right? So now basically they're trying to get money out of this, you know, mama over here like, well, how much money do you think we could get for this? And he was like, I don't know, you know. Um, could be a little something, something or whatever, right? But it's also gonna cost you. So she's like, Well, how much is it gonna cost us? And they talking about fifteen hundred dollars. So obviously they gonna be looking for Miss Chelsea to cough up this fifteen hundred dollars, right? <laughs> for this daggone case child. And you know, mama was basically saying how, you know, they really need this or whatever the case may be, right? And that they didn't transport him to the hospital when they were supposed to. They didn't do what they were supposed to do. They didn't get the handcuffs off when they were supposed to. And so they have several different situations that's going on um, that they need to be addressed or whatever, right? And, um, you know, the lawyer's like, well, I definitely do see something here. There's definitely a standard for this. So, of course, you know, the lawyer going to keep it real with you. He going to let you know if he don't feel like there's no case, he's not even going to be bothered. And if he does feel like there's something there that you could possibly get something off of, of course, he's going to go for it because he would get something off of it too, right? Whatever's going to make him his money is what he's going to roll with. So, looks like Mike might have something there, but it might end up with Chelsea got to spend a whole lot, okay, in order for them to get anything, even if they do get it, you know. And Chelsea does ask him, like, would there be able to be any kind of early release or whatever um, if they find out that it was things that was done you know, that wasn't done right as far as his medical goes. And the lawyer does say, yeah, he could have a case as far as that goes too. He was like, even when he last went up um, in front of the board, the fact that they didn't have anything, um, you know, with the medical on it um, definitely could end up being a, you know, issue. He was like, this could actually be a violation of his civil rights. It could be neglect. And so it was a couple different things that they could go for. Um, as far as that, so we'll be looking to see what's going to happen with Mikey in this case. But in the meantime, you know, Chelsea was still talking about all these charges he had to her friend. She's like, girl, I didn't know about all of these. There's a lot of stuff that's there. And her friend was like, but what? Okay, are we talking murder? Are we talking theft? And she was like, he ain't no damn murderer. Okay, she was like, yes, but it is theft and it is a lot of, you know, charges. And this is very concerning. So she said she ain't going to have him you know, coming up and staying in her damn house or whatever and, you know, going to jail again. Like, if he do, then that would be the end of them. She would kick him out and all this other stuff, right? And so she says that she actually wants to go up to the prison and talk to him. So I said, okay, girl. Now, moving on from her, we get to Sincera and Mark. Child, Mark out here still trying to apologize to Sincera. Sincera don't want to be bothered ever since the shenanigans that he pulled with putting her on with the other you know, um, cellmate <laughs> on the three way. And apparently she had been ignoring his calls, blocking his calls, deleting him. And he just kept, you know, adding her back in typical narcissist. Right. 
And she even calls him a narcissist. And he was like, yeah, my mother would probably agree with you. And she's like, well, she's a smart woman. He's over here talking about he want to see if he can mend things. And he said it was his 30th birthday. And mama done came down to visit. And he wanted his mother to, you know, meet him. And so she's like, well, what do you want? What are you still contacting me for? And he was like, oh, well, I was just hoping that, you know, we could talk or whatever. I didn't want to leave things on a bad note like that. And she was like, well, all I learned is that you are a narcissist. You're a damn liar. You know, um, you basically, you know, she just was going in on him like you trash. And his mama was like, well, why is she even calling you then, you know, doing this video call? And she's like, because I just want to see what you was going to really have to say. If you was going to be coming with anything different, if you was going to apologize. I was just curious since you was going through all of this to contact me after I'm obviously, you know, I'm letting you know that I don't want to be bothered. And he was like, well, we seem like we was going on such a good page. And for you to just drop me like that just because of one call, she's like, yeah, but it's not one call, is it? Because that's when she started giving the breakdown of I've literally been like, do not contact me anymore. I don't want to be bothered. She was like, you know, he asking her, did you think we was exclusive? She like, yeah, I did, because that's the way the freak you, you know, made it to me. And then you turn around and ambush me with this call. You're putting me in a dangerous situation where I could be messed up. Like, don't you think I've tried looking at different ways that I can get out of jail? And I'm literally answering you and telling you and you're not listening to me. You never asked me about everything else that I've been through and what I've been trying to do to get out. She was like me and the girl you had on the three. We was trying to tell you and you still was trying to talk over us and tell us something else, which was true. Right. And I had already answered it before and you were still bringing it back up. So she was like, it's not just the one call. It's definitely way more than that. And so basically... She ends up hanging up the phone on him because she was like, you still trash, ain't nothing changed or whatever. And he over here talking about, oh, how she just trying to basically embarrass him in front of his mom because she sees that she has an audience. No, she was keeping it real with you like she's always been keeping it real with you. OK, Mark, your ass just seemed like you kind of damn slow. And even after <laughs> she hung up the phone on him, his mother was like, you know, you look like a total idiot, right? You look like you ain't got a damn lick of sense. OK, I cannot believe you came out of me right she ain't say all of that i'm saying that but that's the look she had on her face okay because he over here talking about some you know oh maybe and he and she told him like you're playing a game and she's not you know she obviously was taking this serious and she was like i also see that you are trying to handle relationships the same way that you would handle your business you know and you can't that's two different types of things she was like maybe in some situations that would work but it's not going to work in every situation so she was like you know um you've been going about this completely the wrong way or whatever right i don't really understand what the hell you doing and he's talking about some oh i'm just trying to learn you know maybe i could learn to be a little bit more sensitive and to think about people's feelings and um you know he even told sincere like i see that i was putting you in the worst situation and asking you to think about things that you shouldn't have to think about that probably was making your stay even harder and she's like exactly so he was like, you know, I see what I did or whatever the case may be. And he was still trying to tell her that he hoped he could see her in the future. But she had hung up that damn, you know, line. OK, she said, I ain't got time for you and your nonsense. And so his mom was telling him, like, it's a big difference. And he was like, clearly, you're not looking for the same thing she was looking for. She wasn't just looking at this like y'all being friendly, chatting online. He over here talking about some, oh, well, even though she's in there, you know, for um a, a heinous crime or whatever the case may be um you know that's probably wasn't gonna no he said she was volatile right and that was a failure on his part i say she may be volatile but she still got more damn sense than you child okay so she his mom was just basically telling him like that's not gonna work you're not gonna be able to do it that way and he still was sitting here like well i'm gonna continue he gonna talk about some you know um because she was telling him, you can't force it to happen or make things happen like that. He going to talk about he was still going to see it through. And he was really disappointed and sincere because he was falling in love with her. But honey, he getting back on the horse, okay? He going to keep it moving. He going to find another inmate and see if he can have as good as a connection that he had with her. And I said, child, get Mark out of here, okay? Get Mark out of here. All right? We, we done with him. Now... Moving on from that, child, we get to them, um, Ty and Heidi, 
Baby, I heard, okay? Ty's a damn fool. Ty over here talking about, oh, it's over. He don't even know it's over. He don't even know what's about to him, okay? He is dead, 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 dead to me, okay? Dead as a doornail. I'm going to get rid of him once and for all. That's all, folks. She was like, baby, I'm about to play him stupid just like he be playing me stupid. I'm going to act like I don't know what is going on and be all hunky-dory. I'm just waiting on this call, okay? So when he got ahead and called, she's basically like, hey, baby, how you doing? You know, oh, I miss you. You know, um, I was waiting to speak to you. She was like, man, I'm so horny. I'm laying here in the bed. She was like, oh, if you was here, what would you do to me right now? Whatever. Right. And he over here talking about some tying her up and doing whatever. And she like, no, for real. Tell me everything. He was like, man, I'm being dead ass serious. That is everything. I'm going to go in on you. I'm going to do you this way. I'm going to do you that way. Up, left, side, side, in, out, up, down and all around okay and so she like yeah baby that's what you gonna do and he's like yeah she was like oh wow you know I can't wait she was like and let me ask you something honey <laughs> he was like what she was like um is that what you gonna do to that bitch Boston too and she jumped up out that damn bed yeah he was like what you talking about she was like, yeah, that's what you're going through to Boston. That's the same shit you be saying to Boston because I spoke to her, okay? And you engaged to this bitch, too. You got a damn ring for her, too, okay? You out here trying to marry her, too. So I'm guessing that you did the same thing. But guess what? But guess what? But guess what? But guess what? I talked to her. I talked to her. I talked to her, okay? I know every damn thing. And the next thing I know, Ty starts to throw every damn thing in the freaking house talking about, you think I'm dumb? You think I'm stupid? She tossing over damn tables at the and a whole damn fool talking about you a piece of shit you bitch if you wasn't in jail i would come near and kill you and beat your ass you lucky i can't get to you i said to her, why are we throwing our stuff around why are we breaking stuff in our own house girl i'm confused okay you are confusion there's no way in the world you the one that gotta clean all that shit up you do know that right and she steadily I met with that ugly ass bitch and I know everything. So he was like, but why you keep meeting with her? Why you keep listening to her? She lying. She not telling you the truth. She like, no, you're dead to me. You're dead to me. You're dead to me. You're the damn liar. You're the damn liar. This time I'm doing me. I'm doing me. I'm doing me. I'm about to do me. I swear to God. And he over here like, no, you not. And stop playing with me and all of this. And she was like, no. He was like, you let her tell you anything. She said, no, I'll let you tell me anything and I'm not doing it no more. He said, that bitch is lying. She was like, no, you're lying and this and that, right? So, of course, now when she hang up the phone with him, she's talking about, okay, relax, relate, release, numb your goal, you ain't getting care, okay? She trying to calm it down and talk about, oh, I feel so much better that I got that out of my system, honey. I'm relaxed now. She's like, I'm 100% over. I hottie. I'm moving on to bigger and better things. I'm going to me. I feel great. I feel like life is about to go on and it's about, I'm about to be the best of myself that I could be, you know, but I feel so relieved out here in these streets, okay? She says that, you know, she can really find herself and really express herself and really do the things that she want to do. Mind you, Sai has always had a list of damn people, so I'm confused, girl. You know, she's saying that her addiction to him is cured. She's moving on. And, of course, on this big chart of guys that she have is somebody else that is about to move up to that number one spot because, of course, Ty still wants to go ahead and have a damn you know cellmate as her man all right and he is going to be the creme of the creme she's gonna go to this damn round table and move one up and that's her answer to all of this and that was basically the episode y'all so y'all put it in the comments tell me what y'all thought about this one child <sighs> What you liked, what you didn't like, all of that. Okay, let's discuss, let's discuss, let's discuss. Like, comment, share, subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. If you are so inclined, give me a wave. Let me know you came by. Put some flames up in the sky. All right, y'all. Till next.